Hello, my name is Joseph Kozak and I'm a PhD student at CPES. I'm originally from Lower Marion, Pennsylvania, and since my basketball skills were not like Kobe Bryant's, I proceeded to receive my bachelor's degree in engineering physics and my master's in electrical engineering from the University of Pittsburgh in 2014 and 2016. I joined CPES in 2016 and work with both Dr. Yu Hao Zhang and Dr. Kai No. In general, my work and interests include the robustness, reliability, and physics of failure of new wide band gap semiconductors, as well as the impact and integration of these devices into power electronic converters. Over the past few years, we have expanded our testing capabilities at CPES to evaluate the reliability and robustness of wide band gap semiconductor devices. In this research synopsis, I will discuss our work on the physics of degradation and the physics of failure of silicon carbide MOSFETs stressed by overvoltage, hard turn-off switching events. This is, however, only a part of the work being conducted at CPES. To learn more about the research being conducted on gallium nitride device robustness, please listen to the presentation by Reja Zhang. I would like to begin with the traditional safe operating area. With the drain source voltage on the x-axis and drain current on the y-axis and the breakdown voltage limit of the semiconductor as a boundary. From here, manufacturers perform qualification tests to provide a range where the device will reliably operate. Included are additional boundaries which represent the thermal limit determined by on time and duty cycle. On the periphery, in the very extreme conditions, you will find both short circuit and unclamped inductive switching or avalanche for MOSFETs experiments. These tests apply both high voltage and high current stresses through the device. These tests are necessary to understand the overall ruggedness of the semiconductor in case the device undergoes adverse conditions in a converter application. Other traditional reliability evaluations include power cycling and high temperature reverse bias or HDRB experiments. These tests stress specific failure mechanisms of the device critical to the device ruggedness. However, neither requires the device to function like it will in a converter. There is a large space in and outside the SOA that de devices operate under. And so, to better determine the switching-based robustness of silicon carbide MOSFETs, we would like to utilize this space. Reports on HDRB experiments have been published with stresses outside of the SOA to be used for lifetime evaluation. And these results have demonstrated the device's survivability for over 1,000 hours. We have therefore started our test with a similar bias and applied a pulsed switching stress to conduct current within the SOA. Under these conditions, we aim to evaluate the overvoltage switching-based robustness of silicon carbide MOSFETs and understand the degradation of electrical parameters and the physics of failure. We chose a clamped inductive switching circuit to stress our device because of the simplistic nature and the controllability of the stress locus applied to the device. We used a 1200 volt 10 amp device which shows a breakdown voltage between 1600 and 1650 volts. From here, based upon literature of current reliability testing showcasing the ruggedness of these devices at a voltage above the safe operating area, we chose 1450 volts as our DC bias. We then pulsed the device on for a single pulse with a 150 nanosecond on time to minimize self-heating effects. This pulse will allow the current to change charge in the inductor, which will reach a 20 amp maximum. This value is equal to the rated pulse current of the device. Tests were done at both 25 degrees C and 100 degrees C. These stresses can be seen in the switching waveforms themselves. The small spike in turn-on energy results from the capacitance of the anti-parallel diode of the load inductor. However, both the turn-on and conduction energies are small in comparison to the turn-off energy which is 160 microjoules. With a switching period of 250 microseconds, the duty cycle is extremely small. For tests conducted at 25 degrees C, the stress phase lasts six hours. And for tests at 100 degrees C, the tests are approximately five minutes. These stress tests are conducted on an experimental test system that has been automated. The auxiliary equipment is connected to a main computer through a GPIB or USB network and is used to control the device stresses 
as well as monitor and record waveforms. This is our automated test bed. Normally, our setup is parked in the medium power test bay and not at my bench, such that we can perform tests at a safe distance away from the 1400 volts. As shown in the previous diagram, we have a control computer which is connected to the auxiliary power supply, function generator, data acquisition unit, and oscilloscope through either a GPIB network or USB connection. A MATLAB script was written to connect and control the equipment remotely. In addition, we use this protocol to monitor and record the electrical switching waveforms as well as the temperature of the device under test. With the oscilloscope, we measure the drain source voltage, the drain current, and gate source voltage. Using the data acquisition unit, we monitor the temperature. The test circuit sits below the auxiliary equipment and was designed for tests up to 3 kV. We have tested the device under a number of operating electrical conditions and up to 150 degrees Celsius. To perform higher temperature experiments, the device is mounted to a hot plate which sits below the test circuit. To show the functionality and general approach, I'll be demonstrating the general switching test for you. We have applied only 50 volts across the device instead of our 1450 volts. With our general test platform, we are able to change various test conditions such as gate signals pulse width, duty cycle, rise and fall times, and the number of pulses. Here, the system is off. And by initiating our test protocol, you can see the drain bias being applied to the device, followed by a pause before the switching events start. Here, on the oscilloscope, you can see the drain voltage and current, as well as the gate voltage. The code can be programmed to monitor number of pulses or time. In this instance, the code is monitoring and recording the waveforms every minute. The data is extracted from the oscilloscope, plotted, and saved as an Excel file. These experiments run for six hours at room temperature and around five minutes at higher temperatures. After these stress phases are completed, the device is removed from the experimental testbed and the electrical parameters are characterized in the B1505 curve tracer. From our tests, we have found that the drain and gate leakage currents are the primary precursor parameters from these overvoltage hard turnoff stress tests. The drain leakage current for a device tested at 25 degrees C is shown on the left and a device tested at 100 degrees C is shown on the right. Between stress tests, the devices show an inelastic shift and enter a partial failure state where the leakage current increases. For both the devices, the leakage saturates for some time and does not drastically change. The device tested at 25 degrees C failed mid-test at 50 hours, and so a final drain leakage current measurement was not able to be taken. After 30 minutes of stress for the 100 degree C device, you can see that the leakage reached 100 microamps at 300 volts. We determined that device to have failed such that further analyses could be performed. The gate leakage current is the second precursor parameter for the devices stressed by our switching cycling stress. The device tested at 25 degrees C follows a similar trajectory where the devices enter a partial failure state and ultimately fail at 50 hours mid-test. The device tested at 100 degrees C shows an acceleration factor similar to that of the drain current. After 20 minutes of testing, the device enters a partial failure state which lags the increase in drain leakage and the device ultimately was labeled as failed after 30 minutes. Devices stressed into the partial failure state were separated and further analyzed. Additional electrical measurements were taken and the devices show relationships that match electron hopping effects. Additional measurements provide evidence that this increase in leakage is primarily in the edge termination region rather than the active region. The final failure of the device, however, is visible in the active area of the device. This is complemented by published research that describes the primary failure mechanisms existing in the gate oxide near the channel region of the semiconductor, which is in the active region of the device. To summarize this work, the research presented here stresses a device under overvoltage hard turnoff events, which are more relatable to converter applications in comparison to traditional reliability and robustness tests. A clamped inductive switching circuit was integrated with an automated test bed, which provides the power bias, auxiliary biases, gate signals, and monitors the drain voltage, gate voltage, drain current, and temperature. 
Through these tests, we provide insight that the gate and drain leakage currents are precursor parameters to monitor degradation and failure. A new degradation mechanism was identified in the partial failure state of the drain source leakage current, which is caused by electron hopping in the edge termination region. All of these findings were ultimately validated at higher temperatures, which further accelerated the degradation. For further insight into the degradation and failure analyses, please see our two papers, which have recently been published in the APEC 2020 and IRPS 2020 proceedings. If you have any questions or comments about this research, please feel free to reach out to myself or Dr. Yu Hao Zhang. I would like to acknowledge that this work was funded in part by a faculty startup fund at Virginia Tech and by the CPES High Density Integration Mini Consortium. Technical support was provided by Silvaco and Wolfspeed, a Cree company. Thank you all for your attention. Again, please feel free to reach out by email to either myself or Dr. Yu Hao Zhang about this research or the general reliability evaluation research being conducted here at CPES. Thank you and have a great day.